Hello, my name is Nigel Topham. I'm Professor of Computer Systems uh, in the Institute of Computing Systems Architecture uh, in the School of Informatics at Edinburgh University. What I'd like to do is just talk to you briefly about the research we've been doing for the past four years and how that's going to continue for the next three or four years. Over the past four years, we've been working on what we call the PASTA project. Uh, this is an EPSRC-funded project that's focused on figuring out new ways to automate the design of the next generation of embedded processors. This addresses a critical challenge, which is the complexity of the design process. Now, by complexity, we don't necessarily mean the design of complex systems, but more that the space of possible designs is very complex. In other words, there are many thousands of possible designs that one could come up with. So why are there so many different designs that one could come up with? Well, largely it's because when you have a fixed microprocessor, there's really just one design. But when you have tools that can automatically generate new processes, then you can create many thousands of different potential solutions for a given application-specific processor design problem. So these synthetic designs vary hugely in terms of their silicon area, their performance, and also the amount of power they consume. And since many of these are intended for mobile handheld devices, where energy efficiency is very important, then constraining these for maximum efficiency becomes a really important design goal. Now currently, human designers would choose the solution that they want uh, in a manual process. They might go through an, an iterative process looking at a handful of different designs over a period of a few months. This is obviously t costly and very time consuming. Um, what we want to do is to look at thousands of designs over a period of a few minutes or possibly hours, and to search this massive design space very quickly. And this requires an altogether new approach. So the research project we've been doing in the past four years has developed new tools, and these allow us to explore the design space very quickly. And they do this by learning about the design space using techniques called statistical machine learning. This takes the vast amount of data that we get by exploring many different designs and generates a statistical model that allows the tools to predict what would be a good design given an application they haven't yet seen. This allows us to reduce the design time by a factor of about 30 from an exploration of the design space that might take days down to an exploration that takes a few minutes or maybe a few hours. In order to facilitate all of this research, we've developed uh, quite a lot of infrastructure. For example, we designed our own low-power microprocessor, which we call Encore, so that we could experiment with automated processor extensions. Encore turned out to be a very compact, high-performance and energy-efficient processor and has generated a lot of industry interest. One of the things that we did around the middle of the research project, a couple of years ago now, was to produce a 130 nanometer silicon implementation of our first processor. Since then, we've repeated that twice. So we now have three silicon implementations, all of which per work perfectly. Our latest device uh, here is a 90 nanometer chip, which incorporates a synthetic hardware accelerator. It runs in the lab at 600 megahertz, which is pretty impressive for an embedded processor and yet still consumes only 70 milliwatts of power, which again is, is very low in comparison with similar devices that you might find in your handheld mobile devices. In addition to the hardware research, the PASTA project has also innovated in the associated software tools, such as compilers and simulators. When we're working with synthetic processors, it's necessary for compilers to be co-synthesized along with the processor. This permits a flexible boundary between what we put into hardware and what we put into software. And this will obviously depend on performance and cost requirements. And again, to explore this large design space requires ultra-high speed simulation tools. We've developed a world-leading simulator based on the concept of dynamic binary translation using just-in-time compiler technology. This is able to simulate a complete system at speeds exceeding those of real silicon. It's arguably one of the fastest simulators of its type for an embedded process that exists in the world today. The PASTA project began to have a significant commercial impact even during the early years of the project. This began with the licensing of our simulator technology to a UK semiconductor intellectual property company, and this simulator is now productized and on the market. In 2010, we licensed the Encore microprocessor 
to the world's largest electronic design automation company, uh, which is also number two uh, IP licensing company in the world. We see this as a huge endorsement of our research work and a recognition that here at Edinburgh, we are creating leading edge technologies and actively transferring them to the commercial sphere. Revenues from commercial deployment will help to underpin our future research. Going forward, we've now secured another £1.2 million in EPSRC funding uh, for a follow-up project that started in November 2010. This is going to be extending our ideas into the multi-core domain. The goal here is to explore the massive design space of systems with multiple processors in a single design. Again, this is going to be try trying to maximize the performance with minimum energy consumption and minimum dye area. Less than one month into this new project, we're already able to demonstrate a complete 12-core system running in hardware on a field programmable gate array. This is going to allow us to investigate heterogeneous multi-core systems uh, and the interconnects of those systems that allow those processors to talk to each other. We plan to fabricate an initial demonstrator chip in 2011, probably in either 65 nanometer or 40 nanometer technologies. We've begun a collaboration with Professor Harold Haas from the School of Electronics and Engineering here in Edinburgh in this new project. He's an expert in visible light communications, and this requires some rather specialized, high-performance, low-power computational capabilities. Our aim in this project is to bring together, in a synergistic way, our enabling technology with this emerging high-impact application. Our goal is to explore the implications of extending multi-core processors for real-life applications and investigate how machine learning can play a role in the rapid design of future systems. <laughs>